Middle Dawn is almost there, so let's revisit our favorite La Creatura, Singdon. We grab the usual lineup of Zwei Sinclair and LCB Mersault for 20% damage reduction, alongside the healing duo of Chef Ryoshu and LCB Gregor. So, when I recorded this run, I was doing it since Dawn didn't really get a full run yet. But literally a day after I did it, we got a teaser with a new one. So you know what? Double Dawn back to back. No, Sing Dawn. She is a really, a really good solo runner. By no means is she in the top of the crunchy tanks that ignore majority of the mechanics, but she does have a really interesting traits of fueling all three of her available ego, and rolling way too high for her clashes with all skills. But as I mentioned clashing, let's quickly go over her skills. Her skill 1, Remise, is 2 coin Pierce Lust Attack, that inflicts 1 bind to enemy, and gives us 1 haste next turn, alongside gaining coin power at 7 or more speed. Her skill 2, Fleshe, is 2 coin Pierce Gloom Attack, that gives us two haste and deals more damage the longer she clashes for. And her skill 3 salute is a two coin pierce pride attack that should have dealt one chip damage with the glove throw. It gains three coin power at 10 or more speed, gains more damage the longer the clash goes on, and inflicts declared dual status condition. And it heals 15 sanity points on kill, which and honestly, it sounds crazy to me too. Must have been the best on-kill effect of a skill I have used so far. Due to sheer consistency, thanks to the skill being generally low coin amount in comparison to others. Let's talk about Declared Duel. It is a status condition that has a lot of text, but can be really quickly summarized as Nah, I'd win. In short, unit that declared the duel will have clash power against inflicted enemy, as well as gain haste every time they hit, up to 4 times per turn. That's pretty much it. Her defensive skill is a pride evade that causes 3 sanity point loss, which is pretty basic evade skill. Before we recap the run, I wish to mention pathing on Singdon. To ensure somewhat doable solo run, as I mentioned before, she can fuel all of her egos. However, she suffers from Pierce being her main damage type, which means slash nodes are absolutely horrible for us, and Pierce nodes literally do not exist, and are generally also horrible for us, given the enemies we fight there. After a first battle, which you usually might need to stall a bit to get health back via LCB Gregor passive, I would generally recommend going for Blunt Nodes. If it's N-Corp, Fluid Suck for the win. If it's K-Corp, Fluid Suck and let them heal to get some resources back for next stages. And if it's G-Corp, you can generally get your resources here, with occasional La Sangre de Sancho for extra healing here and there to avoid wasting time stalling even more. With that out of the way, quick recap of what happened so we can catch up with the run. And the run it was. It is really difficult to ask for a better start than what we had. Our first battle ended with a 5% chance for Ego Gift, which was none other than Tomorrow's Fortune, Practically a perfect place to get it, as any future gift selection we have will make our run way more consistent. As for other gifts we got in Floor 1, it was Dreaming Electric Sheep that does nothing, as well as Blue Zippolighter which will make our Ego resources up and ready for all passives and Ego use we will ever need. On floor 2 we made a very nice pickup of Nebulizer and Lowest Store, while recruiting Zwei Faust for some defense level ups, LCB Rodia for 20% damage, 
and G Corp Altis for rotating buffs in case we ever need to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Through floor 2, we grabbed Flat Bottomy Pack for some extra healing, and as a boss reward, laid Bloomer's Tattoo for some extra defense and offense level stacking. And with cost 2 spare, I grabbed Tink Tang Hong Blue and Rabbit Heath Cliff for extra 30% damage increase, as well as LCB Ishi for situational clash power in a pinch. As we were going through floor 3, we opened up with Perversion Event for even more focused Ego resource generation. Right after that, we got Homeward for heal from battle to battle, completely negating the need for stalling from this point onward. And with two Pekatula nodes back to back, since they take so goddamn long to actually clear, while being generally low threat thanks to being focused on counter, allows us to utilize that blue zippolighter and perversion to stack up all the resources we will need. Those Pekatula fights rewarded us with respectively irrelevant dust to dust and much appreciated lithograph for even more healing on staggering enemies. And our floor 3 boss ended up being everything there of an Inquisitor alongside two preceding Inquisitors. As I said many times, this fight is only difficult at the very start, when they have their initial stacks of instincts, granting them power up and protection each. But as we get more skill coins ourselves and their instincts goes down with every hit we land, we end up obliterating this encounter completely. Though keep in mind, don't let their counter actually activate. We are slash weak and any of our skills can end up nuking our own health bar back. But after some long battle of attrition, we managed to push forward and our reward being late bloomer to... 2. Oh wait, I picked the Naughty Wolf plushie last time. Fuck. It stays in the video. So yeah, we got late bloomer tattoo for extra defense and offers power levels stacking. And in Floor 4 shop, we had somewhat boring selection of gifts. So I ended up buying standard duty battery for extra rupture. As for Floor 4 itself, we are at the stage where human fights pose no threat anymore, as we can consistently just fluid sag them away. Through Floor 4, we get one gift from two event nodes. However, neither of them really matters, as Smoke and Wires only activates on La Sangre de Sancho. And wishing Karen gift that I couldn't be bothered to even check the name of would do absolutely nothing anyway. And with the end of Floor 4, we have a boss that everyone... You know what? No. I am not making the same Railway 2 joke third time in the row. Why the hell? Do I only fight Talisman lately? It's so that no one will cry, it rolls stupid high in Mirror Dungeon, and it's haunting me for weeks now. I will not talk about the battle, you know it, everyone knows it. If you don't know it, watch any run before this one. Like this video, comment even, subscribe if you dare, I swear to god if Middle Don't Run also has Talisman, I will do some angry shrimp noises. After dealing with the paper doll, we grab ourselves grimy iron steak for even more bleed from our egos. And the shop gives us four leaf clover, making our nebulizer into a consistent poise gain throughout the fights. Now, lore 5 really doesn't have battles that I could show, as it's just all Picatulas and even nodes. So, we grab ourselves special contract from an event node, followed by Barbed Snare from our first abnormality battle, that led us to Pendant of Nostalgia event, finishing our poise build, and what would be a good run without Scarlet Moths to boost our damage even further. Final Pekatula fight gave us Sticky Mag for some valuable defense level downs, and since we didn't fight that much, we have low amount of cost, unable to buy anything. With that, I hope that you 
Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 